This video is made possible by NordVPN. Start protecting your internet experience today with 66% off a two-year plan by using the code BRAINFOOD at nordvpn.com forward slash brainfood. So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Carrie G asks us, is it true that Rick Astley only made like $10 from Rick Rolling? To begin with, for anyone who's somehow managed to avoid the more than a decade old phenomenon of rickrolling, in a nutshell, this involves tricking someone into clicking on a link that takes them to the video for the relentlessly upbeat and infinitely cheesy 1980s anthem. Usually they do this by suggesting it's a link to something particularly clickworthy. So how did this curious meme get its start? For that, it's necessary to start with the much lesser known predecessor of duck rolling. Duck rolling got its start indirectly thanks to the founder of the occasionally infamous internet message board 4chan. His name is Christopher Paul, and he's better known online by the moniker of Moot. Not long before Rick Rolling became the internet's go-to prank, Moot decided to make it so that any time a user wrote the word egg on the site, it would autocorrect to duck. The prank was a big hit, with 4chan users who were particularly amused that the word egg roll would automatically be stylized as duck roll whenever it was typed. As the joke evolved, sometime late in 2006, one anonymous user photoshopped and linked to an image of a duck with wheels, a literal interpretation of the word duck roll. It soon became a common prank on the site to trick fellow users into clicking links that led to the image of the duck, resulting in the coining of the term duck rolled to describe the act of being duped in this way. This all brings us to rickrolling. Sometime in May of 2007, an unknown user on 4chan's video game board posted a link purported to be for the trailer for the game Grand Theft Auto 4, but in reality it took people to a freebooted upload of the music video for Never Gonna Give You Up. Google caches, as well as a bit of trolling through the Wayback Machine, reveals that this video, along with being the first known video created to expressly rickroll internet denizens, is one of the earliest known examples of that music video being uploaded to YouTube. It's also worthy of note that the uploading of this video predates an authorized upload by about some two years. In any event, when linking Astley's hit song became the new in vogue prank, the term rickrolling, borrowing from Astley's first name and the aforementioned duck rolling meme, was coined to describe it. Arguably, the apex of the rickrolling phenomenon came on a April the 1st of 2008, when YouTube automatically redirected every person who clicked on a video on the site's main page to the music video for the song, which we guess is a lot better than directing them to an alternate version of this joke going around the internet at the time involving a couple of ladies and a couple of cups. As to Astley, he first learned about rickrolling via friends of his rickrolling him. Not understanding why his friends were emailing him links purported to be other things but taking him to his hit song's music video, he would later reveal in an interview that his teenage daughter let him in on the prank that was sweeping the internet. This brings us all to what the notoriously reclusive Astley thinks of his most popular song being, to put it bluntly, the punchline to a bad joke. After all, this once again thrust him into the spotlight he so rapidly exited in his late 20s when he got of the life of a pop star and decided he'd rather devote himself to other things, most notably raising his new daughter Emily, rather than being absent for stretches of her life when he was on the road. To begin with, Astley states that he thinks the whole thing is rather amusing, and to quote the man himself, I don't see it as negative. If someone had messed around with it and cut it all up and made me look stupid, I mean, I look pretty stupid anyway in that video, if it was nasty, then I'd probably be a bit pissed off. But it's not. It's like we're choosing that video because it's a full on 80s cheesy video. There's no getting away from it now, and I've got to own it because if I don't, it's like being petty. He goes on, I suppose at first I was a little embarrassed by it. I always liken it to when people look through their photo albums or home videos from 20 years ago and think, gosh, did I really wear that? The difference is, thankfully, on the one hand, and perhaps a bit scarily on the other, mine are out there for the public to see whenever they want. I find some rickrolls really funny. Have you seen the one with President Barack Obama? Someone has cut up his speeches and put them together so that he sings Never Gonna Give You Up. It's totally amazing. I find it bonkers, by the way. This all brings us to why Rick Astley never really capitalized on rickrolling directly as many former stars would have done. While he had a variety of reasons, including not wanting to embarrass his teenage daughter by milking the meme for extra exposure, he also stated, I'm not being an ageist, but it's almost a young person's thing. I think the artists themselves trying to remix it is almost a bit sad. No, I'm too old for that. 
But that is not to say that he did not profit from rickrolling. While you'll often read on many an interesting fact website, more concerned with clicks than getting information correct, that Astley only made $12 thanks to the mean, this is not exactly accurate. While Astley has alluded to making very little off of his side of the YouTube revenue generated from the music video, with to date the unauthorized version on YouTube almost having half a billion views, he does explicitly state that he's greatly profited from the fad, including seeing a significant boost in sales of his records following the phenomenon of rickrolling. Further, his first solo album following the Rick Rolling meme, 50, released in 2016, was also by far his most successful album since his glory days, which were a couple of decades before. Indeed, this album actually managed to hit number one on the UK albums chart and ultimately went platinum. This is despite his initial expectations that nobody would even notice that he released an album. More directly, in 2009, while he was actively staying out of the spotlight during most of the Rick Rolling meme's peak popularity, he did make one exception. Astley himself performed the world's first live Rickroll at the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, with the opening salvo of Never Gonna Give You Up abruptly interrupting another song as Astley waltzed around lip-syncing the lyrics. Of this event, he states, They paid me loads of money, and my friends who live in America said I should do it because everyone watches it. I took the family to New York for a week. It's good to be able to do things like that because as you get older, you realize life's short and you have to make the most of it. I appreciate how lucky I am. Continuing on that line of thinking and more or less summing up his thoughts on his early career, Astley states, I've learned to appreciate my old songs. I quit for about 15 years, didn't sing many of them ever, and I've learned to realize how lucky I was to have them. I know that sounds a bit corny. If I see an artist and they're being a bit shitty, I'm kind of like, just remember, we were the lucky ones. We were all extremely lucky. He also notes fame in his older years is much nicer than at his peak, allowing him to tour when and how he wants instead of having to do whatever the recording studio wanted him to do all the time. And despite his boost in popularity thanks to Rick Rolling and the success of his album 50, he states, I don't feel famous anymore. To some degree I am, when I'm on stage in front of thousands of people singing Never Gonna Give You Up, but in my day-to-day -day life, no one really cares. I don't get recognized until I'm on stage and then I can walk off and forget about it. It's great. Ego dictates it would be nice to play Wembley Arena on my own, but it's a fair trade. Being able to do what I do and also lead a quiet life. You know what else can help maintain your privacy though, but not in the real world? Well, yup, that would be NordVPN. Whenever you browse the internet, you're exposed to all sorts of risks, but you can help eliminate those risks with a VPN, and this is where NordVPN comes in. If you use your laptop, phone, tablet on a public Wi-Fi, you really should be using a VPN to protect your personal details and your privacy. Or maybe you're traveling and you're in a foreign country and you want to see content that would normally only be available to you back home. Well, you can use NordVPN to do that. And you can do it without any delays or any lag, as they have nearly 5,000 superfast servers in 62 countries. If you've ever used a VPN and had to wait for it to buffer a video or if downloads were super slow, that is not the case with NordVPN. It is always very, very fast. And you can also use it on all of your devices, phone, laptop, whatever. It's all very easy and it works on Android, Chrome, Windows, Linux. And you can use it on six different devices, all with one account. Also, unlike some other companies based in the European Union or the United States, Nord doesn't keep any logs. They're based in Panama, so they don't have to keep any logs at all, which is obviously fantastic for your privacy. Indeed, they are the only VPN that gets a perfect score from PC Mag. So start protecting your internet experience today with 66% off a two-year plan by using the code BRAINFOOD at nordvpn.com forward slash brainfood. And now let's do some bonus facts. Ever wonder where the word meme actually comes from? Well, want to know more? Meme was actually coined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. In it, he states the following. We need a name for the new replicator, a noun that conveys the idea of a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. Meme comes from a suitable Greek root, but I want a monosyllable that sounds a bit like gene. I hope my classicist friends will forgive me if I abbreviate meme to meme. If it is any consolation, it could be thought of as being related to memory or to the French word mem. It should be pronounced to rhyme with cream. And now for another bonus fact. The French word mem that he references means same or alike, though the meaning changes somewhat depending on how it is used. The Greek word mimim he derives meme from comes from the ancient Greek word meaning that which is imitated, something imitated, something copied. And now for another bonus fact. When asked by Rolling Stone about the making of arguably one of the most famous music videos in history, Astley states there really wasn't much to it at the time, noting, We made it the week we went to number one in the UK. No one sat me down and said, We're thinking of you wearing 
doing this. I literally just turned up with my clothes. I hadn't even made any money. It wasn't like I was shopping in the coolest shops in London. Me doing whatever I was doing in the Never Gonna Give You Up video and Together Forever was just pure fear. And now for another bonus fact. When further queried about whatever happens to the famous raincoat in the video, Astley stated that he no longer has it. To quote him, Somebody stole it off me in Northern Ireland. We played a radio broadcast outside and it got swamped. There were a couple of policemen, but it all went just a bit mad. Everyone was grabbing hold of me, and before I knew it, it just went off me. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos every day of the week. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at NordVPN. You can find a link to them in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.